Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, we're gonna make a really simple and delicious scalloped potatoes in the Ninja Foodie. And we're gonna do this using two different functions, the pressure cook and the bake roast function. Um, and it's just super easy, and the end result is absolute perfection. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to talk real quick about scalloped potatoes. True scalloped potatoes are potatoes sliced thinly in a cream that is often seasoned with, you know, different seasonings. Sometimes people use nutmeg, which I personally love, but decided to leave it out of this recipe. But you could add it in, it does add an extra little special element to your scalloped potato. So this recipe here does not call for any cheese because cheese, in my opinion, makes scalloped potatoes au gratin potatoes, and this is a recipe just for scalloped potatoes. If you are a cheese lover, you can certainly mix in cheese into your cream to make a cheese sauce. You can certainly top it with cheese and broil it at the very end. That is totally up to you, but this recipe is going to be a very simple and traditional scalloped potato. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is start to infuse our cream with some seasonings, okay? So instead of having like pieces of pepper or pieces of garlic or thyme leaves in the sauce itself that goes over the potatoes, we're gonna infuse those flavors into the cream. So I have three cups of heavy whipping cream and I'm gonna put this into the inner pot, just pour it in there. Now, if you wanted to cut some calories, you can. You could use milk and you can use half and half. However, at the end, you are gonna have a thinner scallop potato, so thinner sauce on your scallop potatoes. So this is gonna allow it to thicken up without the use of a roux. All right, so to the cream, I'm gonna add in, this is about like a quarter cup of fresh thyme. So it's about, I don't know, six to eight um, stems from the, uh, thyme plant that I have, and this is fresh. I do recommend using fresh thyme for this, but if you don't have it, you could use um, dried thyme leaves. You would probably want to add about, I would say probably one to two teaspoons. And then I have a half of a tablespoon of whole peppercorns. And this is gonna just infuse the flavor of the pepper, but we're not gonna see any black specks from the pepper, which I think makes for a more attractive scallop potato. So I'm putting in the half of a tablespoon. Now, if you're not a big fan of pepper, you could always cut that back to one teaspoon or omit it altogether. Then I have two bay leaves I'm gonna put in there. And the last ingredient that's gonna go into our cream is about six cloves of smashed garlic. So I just have a, a bulb of garlic here and I'm just gonna take off about six cloves, which is pretty much, I think, this entire um, bulb because I'd already used some. And to smash the garlic, what I usually do is take off, I don't even worry about peeling it. I take off both ends like that and then I take the back of my knife and just smash it down, and then that lets the garlic clove come out of the paper and you just toss it in. So pretty easy. Now while I'm doing the rest of these, I can go ahead and turn the Ninja Foodi on, and we're gonna go on the sear saute on high and hit start. You don't want your cream to boil. If cream gets too hot, it can separate, so you don't want it to boil, but we are gonna bring it up to just before it boils. And then we're gonna turn it off and let it just sit in the pot until we're finished assembling our potatoes. And then I'll strain it out to get all of the solids out of there. And then we'll reserve it for our scalloped potatoes um, towards the end. Now, if you wanted a more garlicky flavor, you could also mince your garlic. That's gonna give a stronger garlic flavor. But I find by just smashing it, it gives the perfect amount of garlic without being overwhelming. Garlic's a little sticky, so sometimes the paper will stick to your fingers a little bit. All right, I'm just gonna use the rest of these up here, even if it's a little bit more than six cloves because I happen to love garlic. And then we'll talk about the potato choice because I personally 
use russet potatoes for my scallop potatoes. I always have, and I guess I pretty much always will. Um, because I don't make my scallop potatoes with a roux, the starch from the russet really breaks down nicely and helps to thicken the sauce. So it's kind of like a natural little thickener there. Um, you could also use Yukon Gold. I know a lot of people do. They do keep their texture a little bit, they're a little firmer, so they keep their texture a little bit more, but I prefer russet, so that's what I'm using and that's what the recipe will call for. All right, let me go run and wash my hands while this is coming up to a simmer, and I'm gonna give it a little stir real quick just to get that time down into the cream. And it'll take probably about, I would say maybe five, five to seven minutes, maybe even 10 minutes for this to heat up and start to simmer and then we'll turn it off. So I'm gonna wash my hands real quick and then I will talk about how to peel the potatoes. All right, so what I have here is three pounds of russet potatoes that have been washed but not peeled yet because I wanted to talk real quick about to peel or not to peel. That is totally up to you. For me, I am going to peel them. However, you don't have to. They're sliced so thinly um, that you could leave the skin on if you want. It gives a little bit more of a rustic look to the scallop potato, but I'm going for a uniform all white scallop potato, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel these up. So I'm just gonna use a uh, you know, vegetable peel and, and peel them all up. Um, but before I do that, let me talk real quick about the onion and the leek that you see here on my cutting board because um, you can use either one. I happen to have a leek that I needed to use up, so I'm gonna use it in this recipe and the recipe will call for a leek. Um, I really like the way the thin slices of the leek went into the dish, looked afterwards. It was a little bit, I don't a little bit better, I think, than an onion, um, but you can certainly use either a sweet onion or a regular yellow onion. Just slice them thinly as well, like you would the potatoes, because we're gonna layer potatoes, onions, potatoes, onions, potatoes, onions, um, or leek in this case. I'm gonna use leek. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop up the leek, and I'll just show you real quick how I do that. Now, I took off the the darker green part. The only reason I took that off is because it was pretty dry. Um, Cause again, it's been in the refrigerator and I do need to use this up. So it's kind of dry. So I'm only using the lighter green part, but you could use even the darker green. I think that would be beautiful in the dish or save the darker green and slice them into little tiny circles and then put them on top as a garnish. I think that would be gorgeous. But Mine went in the compost pile because it was too dry to use. So when I'm cutting a leek, for this recipe anyway, the only thing I do is just take my knife and go here and just make little, little rounds like this. And they're about a quarter of an inch. The thinner the better, honestly. And one thing when you're slicing something that's round like this, or really anything, one thing you wanna do is keep your knife stationary and move your food. So you're not going like this, okay? Because that's the way you cut a finger. Instead, and I'm going pretty slow here. I usually do it a little fast. It's a rocking motion with your knife and you move the food to the blade, but the knife stays stationary. All right, just a little tip there. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up this and I'm gonna peel these potatoes and then I will show you three different ways that you can slice your potatoes for this scallop potato recipe. I didn't even get a chance to um, peel my potatoes and I started to see steam coming up and a few little bubbles forming. That's when it's time to turn this pot off. You do not want to bring it to a boil or your cream can separate. So now I'm just going to stir it just to cool it down a little bit um, because it was really close to boiling. And then you just let it sit. You just let it sit and steep with these um, spices in there. Oh, and you know what I forgot to add? I forgot to add a little bit of salt. This is optional too. It just depends on um, you know, how you like your dish. But I found that adding a half of a teaspoon of salt at this point to the cream really, um, really helped the end result. We also will be salting the potato layers, but when I tested the recipe, just salting the potato layers, 
the sauce was just missing something and it was the salt. So half a teaspoon of salt can go in there and it could go in in the beginning now, whenever, it's fine. All right, so now I'm gonna peel these potatoes up. All right, so let me show you how to cut the potato for a scallop potato. Um, what I did was I peeled these and then I rinsed them off with water. Now you don't wanna do this ahead of time because they will brown up pretty quickly. You also do not wanna soak these in water to prevent browning because that is gonna pull the starch out of them and we need the starch to thicken the sauce. So this is something that you do right before you're going to layer your scallop potato. All right, so if you have, um, if you don't have a mandolin, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, um, you can use a sharp knife. You wanna make sure that you have a good sharp knife though. That is key. And you're gonna put the potato down. Now it's a round surface. But scallop potatoes, you usually see the entire round. So this is one of those things you just have to be really careful about. So again, put your knife down and just take off a little tiny piece. Moving your food, not your knife. You want your potatoes thin enough to almost see through, okay? So this is probably like, an, oh my gosh, I don't even know, 16th to an eighth of an inch maybe. Um, very, very small. Now some of them are a little bit bigger. That is gonna be okay. So don't, don't worry about that, it's fine. Just try to get them as thin as you can and as even as you can because that's gonna help with even cooking. So again, that's paper thin. This one's just a little bit thicker, but it's still gonna be fine. Now, if you're not comfortable with a knife, um, do yourself a favor and just take off a little bit here at the bottom. It's gonna sit a lot flatter. You can have more control over the potato. Move it into your knife to get those really nice thin slices that we want. Of course, I didn't get any thin slices that time, did I? There, that one's a little thicker than I'd like to. I'm not doing a very good job. Well, anyway, after I did this, there we go. So, little, you can almost see through it. Um, so after I did, I don't know, I think I tested this two or three times already, and I was a little bit tired of peeling all these, or slicing all these potatoes. It was just kind of a pain. So I went ahead and purchased a new mandolin. I had an old one, but it didn't work well, so I went ahead and got one that was stainless steel this time, because I've always had the plastic ones, which a plastic one is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that at all, and they work until they don't, until the blades just don't seem to um, be sharp anymore. But what I decided to do was go ahead and get a little bit more of an expensive one. This one I think was $40 on Amazon, and I will certainly link to it uh, in the video description for you. What I like about this one is, number one, it's pretty sturdy. Um, it came with some cut proof gloves, which I really like. So I'm going to throw those on right now. And also if you have big hands though, this pro these probably aren't going to fit. They're pretty snug. I guess they stretch, but they are pretty, um, I, I think they're pretty small actually. And I have kind of have small hands, um, but they fit me pretty well. Okay. So you also have a guard here. And what you do is just put your potato into the guard. And then it's secure. And you take your potato. Now I'm not sure if this is set exactly the way I want, so I'm just gonna do one slice. And it's a little bit, yeah, they are paper thin, let me tell you. These are too thin. So these are like, these would be perfect for really crispy um, potato chips, but they are too thin. So I'm gonna adjust it a little bit so that it's a little bit thicker, but not too, too much. And the knob on the side just adjusts it for you. All right, let me take a look and see what we got here. I think this is gonna be the perfect, um, let me take this glove off here. That looks really good. Okay, so that is the perfect thickness that I want. And now all of my potatoes are gonna be uniform. And that is one of the great things about using a mandolin. Now they're all even. You could also use this for your onion for this recipe too. That would work great. One other quick thing I'm gonna show you, um, and I'll use the same potato, is this has a julienne feature, which I am really excited about because it's gonna make it really easy to make shoestring french fries now. Although I do them from hand mostly, but. You have to use a little more force than with the slicing blade, but the end result is pretty cool. 
And if you were doing a whole potato, um, you know, you wouldn't, these wouldn't be so short. But anyway, so they're perfect little, what do you call them? Squared off little um, potato strips, I guess you'd call them. So they would be good for french fries, especially if you used a whole potato. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna cut the rest of them real thin like I did before. But let me show you how to layer the first layer because each layer is gonna be exactly the same. And what I'm using is the baking dish that comes with the Ninja Foodi baking kit because it's, it's about three inches in depth. It might actually be a little bit more. And so we're gonna get probably about seven layers of potatoes in here. And, and they're gonna, that makes a, for a great scallop potato when you've got a lot of thinly sliced layers. But you could definitely use any size pan and the instructions are gonna be pretty much the same. So this is one of those um, recipes that you don't have to use. What I'm using, you can use whatever you want. Um, so it could be like a, you know, an eight inch by two inch pan. It could even be a seven inch by two inch. You're just not gonna be able to get all the potatoes in there. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do to get the pan ready is go ahead and butter it up. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of butter with my silicone brush and just butter all around and the sides of the pan. All right, that's perfect. So now what you wanna do is you wanna layer your potatoes in a single layer, just overlapping just a tiny bit, going around the outer edge. And then repeat on the inside here. So it takes about one potato to make one single layer. All right, that's it. Now what I'm gonna do is sprinkle some salt. I'm not measuring this, use your judgment. Doesn't matter, I'm taking like maybe an eighth of a teaspoon, not a lot, but I'm gonna sprinkle it over the potatoes because that's gonna help um, season each layer. Now if you're, a really, if you're a pepper lover and you don't mind the black specks or you wanna use white pepper, you could do that same thing with pepper as well. But I've got the pepper infused cream, so that's what I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna take some of these leeks and I'm just gonna sprinkle them on top. So if you were using an onion, this is where you would put your thin sliced onions. It's right on top of here. I just get them kind of, I break them up so they're single rings instead of a big glob of onion. They sort of disappear in the dish, but they really taste good. All right, so that's it. Now your first layer is done. And now I'm gonna really quickly do the rest of these with my mandolin and get the rest of the layers going. All right, so now we've got our, our um, thin potatoes and I'm just gonna repeat the same layering process as we did on the first layer. So one layer of potatoes, followed by some salt, followed by some leeks or onions if that's what you're using. So I was able to get all of those potatoes sliced up in um, about six minutes, which is amazing. It usually takes a lot longer when you're doing it by hand. That's one of the reasons why I do not make scallop potatoes very often. But now that we have a quick shortcut using the Ninja Foodi and I have this wonderful mandolin, I'm pretty excited I can make these more often. Although I think I'm gonna have to do an au gratin version because my husband doesn't like scallop potatoes. He likes au gratin. So I'll probably have to switch it up a little bit. And I, I do have an au gratin potato recipe in my Flavors of Fall cookbook, and I will link to that right up there if you wanted to take a look at all the recipes. There's 30 plus recipes in there, um, fall based. So we've got some, you know, au gratin potatoes and apple crisp pie. Um, several different kinds of chilies and they're really good, including um, like a vegetarian veggie chili that is superb. Even my husband, who is a big meat eater, absolutely loved it. 
Um, so yeah, some great recipes in there if you want to grab a copy. It's a digital ebook, so there's three different um, price points that you can um, choose from. One is $4.99, one is $3.99, and one is $2.99. The recipes are the same. The difference is inclusion in a Facebook group and um, some bonus added features like shopping list and things like that um, for the um, more expensive versions of it. But it's the same, same exact recipes. All right, so again, so I'm gonna continue to do this um, until everything is layered up. And I'm trying to like kind of uh, judge how many leaks I put on each layer because I want to make sure I have enough to go on on every single layer. And we've still got probably about five or six to go here. Okay. All right, so I'm just finishing up my fifth layer here. And one thing you're going to notice is that the center starts to raise up more than the edges. And I'm going to fix that by doing a little bit of like a double layer on the edges on this, um, this next time. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm just going to take, like, go around overlapping a little bit more. And I'm going to try to like push it down and even these out. And that is so when we pour the cream over before we bake it, that it doesn't just run all over to the edges, that we get the cream dispersed throughout all of the potatoes. So I'm just kind of doubling up here on the edges. You're never gonna notice that when you cut it though, so don't worry. So I'm just finishing up. I think, we got, I think I lost count actually. I think we have eight or nine layers of potatoes in here. Probably eight, but I'm not sure. When I look back on the video, I think I'll be able to tell. And what I did was when I found some of the ones that I cut that are a little bit thicker than the thin ones that the mandolin did, I saved them for the very top. Um, and that's because not only are they gonna pressure cook and they're gonna be you know, on the top here, but they're gonna also be um, the first thing that the bake roast gets when we go under that function. So even though they're thicker, they're still gonna cook up just fine. All right, so I'm just putting the rest of them on just to use them up wherever I see fit. If you wanted them to be absolutely perfect and beautiful, you don't have to use them all. All right, now, I'm not putting onions on the top of this layer, but I do have some that I have there just in case I want to use them as a garnish at the end, which I may do. All right, so I'm gonna wash my hands. We are ready to get this covered up and into the Ninja Foodi pressure cooker. Um, we're gonna pressure cook for about uh, 10 to 12 minutes. Probably I'm gonna set it for 10 minutes and, and see how that does. Um, that's worked on previous uh, test batches. However, if you have thicker potatoes like this, you're going to want to increase your cook time. So if you're just going to make it real rustic and just cut your potatoes, you know, a little bit thicker, that's fine. Just pressure cook for about 15 minutes instead of 10. So I'm going to get this right now strained out so I can also clean the pot before these potatoes have a chance to start to brown. And to do that, I'm just going to use a strainer and I'm gonna pull the pot out. Now it's not hot anymore, so I don't need to worry about that. And I'm just gonna strain the cream, which is gonna catch those peppercorns. It's gonna catch the garlic cloves. It's gonna catch everything that is solid in there. And we're gonna be left with a really nice infused cream. And that's what we're gonna to use to make our scalloped potatoes with. So I'm gonna put this over here and just let it sit here and drain. Wash my hands, wash the pot, and then we'll get this under pressure. All right, so we have our potatoes in those, um, you know, eight or nine layers, and they're salted and everything. They're ready to go. Now, one of the reasons why scalloped potatoes can be challenging to make is because it takes forever for the potatoes to cook because there's so many layers of them. And when you put it in the oven, or even if you baked it in the Ninja Foodi and didn't pressure cook it first, you would have some trouble getting them done all the way down and, and you know, through the middle and, and on the bottom and stuff. It just takes a long time. That's another thing. It takes forever. Um, and more times than 
not I end up with some potatoes cooked perfectly and some not. So we are going to take that out of the equation by pressure cooking, but we're not gonna pressure cook with the cream because cream under high heat separates. So what I'm gonna do here is cover this. You could cover it with foil or you can use one of these silicone covers from Walfos, but you could use foil as well. And if you're interested in picking these up, I will link to them below in the video description. We're gonna use the rack on the low position. And this could be like a little bit of a tight squeeze because this is a bigger pan. But there, that's good. Put one cup of water into the inner pot. Lower this in. And just make sure that it's covering um, all of the whole pan because you don't want water to get in there. All right, and then we're gonna put the pressure lid on. Make sure the valve is to the seal position in the back. Turn the Ninja Foodi on. We're gonna go under high pressure. It defaults to 10 minutes and that's what we want. You can see that right there. So we're gonna let this come up to pressure, which should happen fairly quickly. And then we will let it pressure cook for 10 minutes. And then we'll be able to do an immediate release because you don't need to worry about natural releasing this. And then we'll get our wonderful cream poured over and we'll get it in to the Ninja Foodi to bake. All right, so we're in the final countdown of the 10 minutes. So we just have about, I don't know, what, 15 minutes to go, I mean, 15 seconds to go. And then I will do an immediate release. So the pot came up to pressure pretty quickly, somewhere between five and seven minutes, but I did not time it this time. And we went under pressure for 10 minutes and now we're gonna do an immediate release. All right, the pin drops, so now we can open up the lid, do that away from you because it is steamy and hot. Set that down. Now, technically, you can really just grab the silicone cover, take it off, and pour your cream in. You don't even have to take it out. But I'm gonna go ahead and take it out just so that I can um, go over things if, like, if anything's wrong with it or, and I'm gonna check for doneness. And I'm a little short, so sometimes it's difficult for me to, to get into the pot there. So, all right, I'm gonna take this out. Now, one thing about this rack <laughs> is it makes your food kind of uh, slippery a little bit. All right, so this looks good. Now, if you can see that I've got some dark spots on my potatoes, you will not have dark spots on your potatoes. We had a little bit of a camera malfunction and my potatoes sat too long before I got them into the pressure cooker. And so they, you know, they get these spots so easily. Now what I'm gonna do is just test for doneness by sticking my knife in there. And if it will go through with very little effort, then your potatoes are done. If they're thicker potatoes and they're not done in the 10 minutes, don't fret, just put it back in and pressure cook for a few more minutes. But these look just fine. So the next thing I'm gonna do is pour in the cream. Now this is our infused cream. And boy, it smells amazing. You just want enough cream to cover the potatoes and you can press them down there. You do not need to use it all, okay? So you don't want, we don't want soupy scalloped potatoes. And that's what it looks like right now, doesn't it? It looks like a whole mess of soup. But I promise you, we're not making potato soup. We're making scalloped potatoes and this is gonna thicken up just fine. All right, that looks good. So I used probably about maybe two and a half cups um, total of the cream. And the last time I made them, I, I needed to use the whole three cups. So, you know, that's just gonna vary. So just until they are almost covering all of the potatoes is perfectly fine. If you put it all in, no worries. You can just bake a little bit longer too to thicken up this cream sauce. All right, put that in there like that. And then we're gonna get this silicone lid back on. We will take the lid off um, towards the end of the baking, but for now we want to, the potatoes to be covered because we don't want them to overcook on the top. I'm just sliding this underneath a little bit. I cut my, um, my silicone cover to fit my eight inch Fat Daddy-O pan, and I should have cut it just a little bit bigger um, to cover this pan too. I mean, it covers it, but it's a little tricky and that's my fault. I just cut it a little too small. 
All right, so we're gonna go back in. Not even worried about dumping the water. That is not gonna matter, okay? So there's not enough in there to worry about. We're gonna put the lid down and select the bake roast function. Take the, the temperature down to 325 and we're gonna go for 20 minutes. And then we'll check on it. So it'll bake for 20 minutes. The reason why I chose the temperature of 325 is because I tested the recipe at 250. It works, that works fine, but it was a really long bake time. I mean, I think it was like, I don't know, 35 minutes or so. Um, and so I wanted, then I increased the, the uh, temperature to 350 and they were getting too brown. The cream was getting brown and separating before it actually absorbed into the potatoes and thickened up. So we're gonna go in the middle there and I'm just gonna keep an eye on it because the idea is to reduce the cream so that it creates that nice scallop potato sauce that we love without separating because you don't want it to separate or it just tastes good but it just doesn't look very pretty. So 325 for about 20 minutes and then I'll check it and we may have to go a little bit longer covered or at that point I might uncover it and bake a little bit longer. So I'll make that decision when I look at it and that's what I encourage you to do when you're cooking is make adjustments as you go because nothing is perfect all the time. All right, so we just have a few seconds left of our bake time of 20 minutes. And then what I'm gonna do is take the cover off. Don't freak out. It's gonna look soupy and everybody's gonna be like, that's not what scalloped potatoes are supposed to look like. Trust me on this one. At, by the end, when we're done and we let them sit and kind of cool down a little bit, that cream thickens up and creates the most velvety, delicious scalloped potato sauce ever. All right, so I will probably bring this out onto my cutting board, but you can just lift up the cover like this. And you'll see on the inside of this cover, there's some dark areas. That's where the cream started to really brown and cook up. Um, and that doesn't hurt anything. In fact, it smells amazing. So what I like to do at this point um, is just push the potatoes down under the cream because now we're gonna leave it uncovered. They don't all have to be under the cream, but um, I like them as many as I can get under the cream, under the cream, so that as the heat hits them, the potatoes don't become too dark before the cream really starts to um, reduce and create that thicker sauce. So now I'm gonna close the lid, leave it uncovered, and we're gonna go with the bake roast function. And we're gonna go down to 325 and hit start. I'm gonna leave it at 15 minutes because this is the time when you just check it. So definitely I'm gonna go a full 10 minutes. I have a feeling it's gonna take somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes to do this. So the next question I always get, is it really a time saver? Yes and no. I mean, scalloped potatoes in the oven really take probably an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half. And then a lot of times they're not completely cooked. So I, while this might not save time, it certainly gives a better and more consistent result with the potatoes by doing that 10 minute pressure cook time. It really helps those potatoes go, you know, get soft and start to cook before we add the cream in. Now all we're doing is reducing the cream. If you used a roux based cream, so if you whisked in a roux to the cream, before you poured it over the potatoes, you could decrease this time considerably because your sauce is gonna be thicker. But I wanted to keep it pretty traditional and not do the roux this time. So that's why I chose to you know, not do that and just go with a longer bake time. The end result is so perfect that personally, I won't make scallop potatoes any other way now. Um, the other beauty of this dish, and I, this is probably my favorite thing, this is a total make-ahead dish. So you could make this, like let's say you're gonna make it for a special dinner or occasion or a holiday. Make it up the day before, just like we're doing here now, put it in the refrigerator. Then probably, I guess, maybe about an hour or two before you wanna serve it, put it in the Ninja Foodie cupboard and steam it with two cups of water in the inner pot you know, put it on the rack like we did to pressure cook and bake it. Make sure it's well covered. Steam it for about 25 to 30 minutes. That is gonna heat it up perfectly because potatoes are hard to get 
reheat it once they're refrigerated. Um, if you've ever tried, you know, there'll be cold pockets, but that steaming process heats it all throughout. And then you just put the tender crisp lid down and put it on broil for a few minutes and broil up that top and serve it. And they will be absolutely perfect. So this is definitely a great dish for making ahead. All right, so we just have a few seconds left to go. And um, of course, you know I peaked, right? I did, it looks really good. You'll be amazed um, at how much different it looks now. So once it finishes the little cool cycle, which only takes a second or so, we can open up the lid and take a look for ourselves. And it's looking really good. Really, really, really good. So you can still see that there is some cream here that's on the liquidy side. I don't want you to worry too much about that. As this sits and cools, that will thicken up. Um, so don't worry too much about that at all. Now what I usually do at this point is push these down a little bit just to sort of bring any of the real liquidy cream up on the top. So just gently press down. We're gonna get a second layer of that golden, delicious, um, cooked cream because that, I mean, there's so much flavor right here. It's unreal. So I'm just going to press down you can see there's some places that still are really, um, pretty liquidy, but that's okay. Even if you didn't do this, it does definitely thicken up as it cools. All right. So now for the final touch, what I'm going to do is just put some of these on. You could put them on and just leave them on raw, but what I like to do is kind of get them into the cream a little bit. You don't want to put them on before the whole 15 minutes because they just get too dark. Um, and I know that because I did that. Um, so I'm just going to push these down into the cream a little bit so that they cook. This is going to be amazing. It looks wonderful. All right, so now let's go ahead and put the lid back down and we're gonna set it to, well, we, we could even broil um, or we could go on the bake roast. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the bake roast um, just because I'm afraid if I really hit it right now with some high heat like a broil, what's gonna happen is it's gonna just start to separate because I can already see some of, some of it separating a little bit and I don't want to heat it up too much more. So I'm gonna leave it at the 325. We don't need to go 15 minutes, five minutes should do the trick. And then we will take it out and let it cool down. And if five minutes isn't enough and it still looks too liquidy on top, we'll just increase the time, you know? And that's what you need to do because it will vary from the amount of cream you used, the thickness of your potatoes, how much they absorbed, that kind of stuff, and how much the cream reduced. So just make some judgments and you'll see what it should look like at the end. All right, we just have a few seconds left to go on that five minutes um, that we did and we'll let it go through the cool and then I'll open up the lid and we'll see what it looks like. Hopefully it's done. It looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. The green onions have started to get a little bit of color on them, but not so much that they look burnt. So, and what happened the first time that I put the uh, onions on earlier, they just got too burnt looking. So I wasn't really happy with that. All right, let's take this out. It's gorgeous. Please take it off the brack. But you can put it on a cooling rack or something like that or just a cutting board, but take it off the rack because the rack, it, it just causes food to slip. And I've heard about more accidents and I've had my own um, accidents where the whole pan just falls on the floor. So please put it on a more stable surface. Now, what I'm gonna do is if you cut into this right now, you're gonna get the cream just leak right on out. It's gonna look real runny. We have to let it sit and cool down for probably 15 to 20 minutes, but it's not gonna cool down the potatoes. These potatoes are gonna stay hot, but you just need to let it sit and rest and let the, the cream finish thickening up. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll cut it and then we'll taste it. All right, so this has been cooling probably I would say 15 minutes or so, and I might be rushing it a little bit, so I won't be surprised if I see some cream that hasn't totally thickened up, but you know what? I just cannot wait any longer to taste this. So we're gonna go ahead and dig in. 
So I'm using um, a spoon that is safe for nonstick because I don't want to scratch this pan up. So I do not recommend you using metal in this pan at all. All right, here we go. It's going through the potatoes and it looks good. I think I did let it cool enough. You know, the first one is always a little on the hard side to get out, but look at that. Okay, so this is perfect. And hopefully you can see, I'm gonna turn it to me for a second, but yeah. So hopefully you can see all these individual layers of these little potatoes, thinly sliced potatoes, I should say. That is what makes a perfect scallop potato. All right, so let me dig in here. So you can cut it right through with the fork, so that's the right texture. They're holding their shape, though. Oh my gosh, here we go. I'm so excited, whoops. Mm. These are unbelievable. Wow. They are so creamy. The infused cream makes a world of difference, let me tell you. I mean, it is, the flavor is like just over the top delicious. Mm. Wow. I might've been a little heavy handed with the salt, um, you know, so just use your judgment how you like your food. It probably could use a little less salt. And there, there was a couple layers where the salt was sticking to my fingers and I got a little bit too much on there. Wow. Mm. I think I like these better than au gratin potatoes. And I love cheese. But these, I don't know. There's something so decadent about them. They are easy to make. And then by doing it in the Ninja Foodi and under pressure, you take away the guesswork of are the potatoes gonna be done? Because you're gonna know that they are done before you even pour the cream over. And then all you're doing is letting the cream sort of thicken up and reduce some. This one is a total winner. I am so excited to be able to share this with you. I hope you make it, I hope you love it. And I also hope you make it your own. So you know, add whatever seasonings you want into your infused cream. Don't skip that step though. That is gonna make the difference between a mediocre scalloped potato and an excellent scallop potato. So definitely give this recipe a try and leave me a comment when you do and let me know how you like it.